Gracious. Yeah. Ah, oh, great, thank you. Um, my name's Pete Lebel from Primary Media. I'm going to ask Andrew a question on can we sell welfare as well as food quality and food safety? I mean, is there a market for the fact that we do in South Dorf and things in Asia? I'm sure we can sell welfare in Australia. Um, Australian consumers are highly sensitised to the issue. Um, and the South Store Free Initiative, I guess, was to say Australian pork is not only Australian, but it's different. And, and there's many other initiatives where we're trying to differentiate our product around from those that uh, import competition. We've always had a mantra that selling welfare in China is just a waste of time. I believe that that's slowly changing and I believe that the ultra premium segment that we would be seeking to engage with in China would be a segment that would have an aspect of animal welfare as a, an attribute that could be quite positive. That's a hypothesis. I think still a lot of work to be done around that and there are, um, there are sort of table stakes to get into that market around food safety and quality and eating experience as well. But I think animal welfare can, can be the icing on the cake for some of those uh, consumer segments of very, very high value. Great question. I might direct that one to Tom too to see whether there's any differences in the beef industry from the point of view of animal welfare and where it fits in value-based pricing. I think from a beef perspective, uh, sustainability concepts are becoming important, particularly for some of the grass, you know, we market a grass-fed brand around the world. You know, consumers have an expectation about that grass-fed brand and uh, uh, you know, over time the sustainability claims that brand makes is going to become more important but I mean, I wouldn't see a, uh, you know, a particular brand associated around welfare. Any great questions? Yep. Gentleman up the back. Yeah, just one the Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, traditionally the industry has been very much of the processing industry here, a spot market industry. Where, uh, um, but as I think we've built more collaborative relationships with our customers, what's beholden on us is to build those relationships with suppliers so we can meet that demand. So very much the concept around value-based marketing is to move away from uh, you know, that spot market transaction to a longer-term relationship. Thanks, a, a good question. Um, we tested that recently, <laughs> thanks to uh, someone in the Department of Finance thought that uh, in Indonesia would bring in a new tax a couple of weeks ago. And so we put on 10% tax and we didn't have a buyer turn up. So the, the way that the, we've, we're certainly very customer focused in, in our feedlot operations, but really the, the, the buyers send a truck and turn up to the feedlot. And, and we saw that by putting the price up 10% they didn't turn up. Um, for uh, for a few days, so I think we're we're at a, a pretty tight spot at at the moment in Indonesia. But prices, you know, are, are you go back a couple of years ago even, and you think, wow, we're at this tight spot. But then we sort of things flatten out, and then we find another another leg up, and people work out how to be more efficient. They they change the serving size. Um, they look at different methods of cooking, and and uh, we're continually seeing. A growth in the in the in the market and and 
And the growth is certainly with people that have got, got disposable income. It's not people that don't have disposable income. And I think certainly through Southeast Asia, beef is, is moving to be more of a luxury staple rather than just a, an everyday staple. Any other questions from the audience? I've got a question for Troy or Tom that I might do as, as the luxury of the chair. Uh, Troy, you spoke about using or marketing the whole animal and Tom spoke about <coughs> cut-space systems and marketing the, the advantage of, of cut-space systems. They pull the Australian beef industry in two different directions very quickly. So how long before we start reporting on a manufacturing Australian beef industry and a premium Australian beef industry and, and will that be the topic of the 2030 presentation that Tris gives to the Australian beef industry? This is, uh... <laughs> So that's a great question, Alex. And um, I think, um, yeah, I, th I think though that even though you know we're talking quality and not quality, and what's what's the difference quality between different different customers, even though you know uh, if you look in Lampung, which is in the bottom end of Sumatra, we've got 18 main customers, and they buy the cattle on live weight. Those cattle get full retail beef yield assessment. Um, you know, it's all manual, but every animal is 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 uh, there's a there's bone, red meat. Uh, the cuts are pretty basic, split into loin and everything else, and then offal and fat. And uh, and the next day, your negotiation it reflects that yield back off that with our customers. So I think our, the bulk of our customers in Indonesia are already at yield, um, and and they are very sensitive to to yield. So that's giving the right signals to us as a feed lotter. We're now in putting that into our genetics program, um, and it's a really difficult one to weigh up fertility, growth, um, and and yield. Um, so, but we're 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 making decisions. Are we giving that information to other producers that supply us? No, we're not. Um, we haven't really worked out how to do that yet. Um, but we are also, a, you know, a very our biggest customer that's not ourselves is Tees. So, um, you know, we're working closely with the T's guys and thinking significantly. You know, we made genetic decisions last year based on what T's said that they would do in the next couple of years. Are you all happy with that answer? Uh, yes, Dougal. Yeah, Dougal from New South Wales TPI. Tom, something about marketing. Has there been any interest at uh, an export front as to you know, the, the concept and the process and whether in fact there is any um, willingness to pay more for that type of system rather than just focus on it domestically? The interest from our customers, is, and I think I said we don't mind where they are in the world, is about getting a more consistent product that more consistently meets the needs of their customer. And we explain value-based marketing to them is that's what we're trying to do. And only by getting the right price signal back to the producer uh, will, we, will we achieve that. So, yeah, I think the interest is consistent around the world. If it, McDonald's want a more consistent manufacturing meat product as much as, you know, a high-end restaurant in Sydney or Melbourne wants their product to perform. Very good. Uh, with no further questions, um, would you join with me in thanking Andrew, Troy, Tom and Chris?